morning to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. In all this uh, effort as using modern technology in all areas of uh, industry and businesses, one should ensure that the, we are very mindful of what we are doing to the world, to the planet, and to the people who do not get the benefit of this kind of technology and development. So, both sustainable and inclusive. Inclusive, definitely easy to understand. It's a development model which includes, which has equity as its focus. It, it covers all segments of the economy. But sustainable development could mean different things for different people. But at its core is an approach to development that looks to balance different and often competing needs against an awareness of the environment, the social and the economic limitations we face as a society. It is also recognition that the alarming loss of species and habitats requires us to step away for a bit from a human-centric understanding of the natural world and to realize that even for sustaining human life on earth, we need to look at all species and put nature at the center and not man at the center of this world. Sustainable development is, a, is an outcome of a political order in which society is so structured that it will learn fast from the mistakes in the use of natural resources and rapidly rectify its human nature relationship in, a, in uh, accordance with the knowledge it gains. So these two threats, the climate change and the loss of biodiversity, is leaving the world's population and future generations far more insecure in terms of water, food, energy and health. The fact is that the global energy system has little changed over the last 25 years. In 1994, 80% of the global energy came from fossil fuels. The figures remained unchanged. There were 2.8 billion people using polluting solid fuels to cook food. This number too has remained the same. A UN report released just last week talks about that the out says the outlook is bleak. In the case of risks to economic system services and, bio and biodiversity, there is a new global di biodiversity framework through the Convention on Bio Bi Biological Diversity, which has been called a New Deal for Nature. This pact, expected to be agreed in Beijing in late 2020, will lay out the global strategy for protecting nature throughout 2030. Isn't it high time we then talk in terms of a Green New Deal for India? Something like what Alexandria Cortez said. She makes the point that the model of economic growth and public policy should factor in issues of climate change and loss of biodiversity in a way that it leads to a more healthy, inclusive, secure and sustainable society. I just want to present three areas which I think are relevant to the topic of this conference of the next two days the geospatial technology, how can it bring us to the Green New Deal that we can think about? First, let's take agriculture, which is closely linked to water. Agriculture contributes in India 18% of GDP, 60% of the population are living. It absorbs 78% of fresh water and just two crops, rice and sugarcane, guzzle 60 percent of the water. Indian agriculture has become unsustainable. Priority should be to focus on an inclu sustainable, inclusive development of agriculture. We need a new green revolution that focuses on crops that uses less water, more crop per drop. Consumption patterns need to be incentivized to consume produce that use less water and energy. We need to ensure that water is managed differently we need to protect our forests, our grasslands, our water bodies, and our degraded lands. The second area of priority I would put forth is energy. How do we deal with our energy requirements for growth and for the fact that we are 
the average per capita consumption is much lower than what it is and at the same time being mindful of the impact of climate change. The carbon footprint of the four highest income classes earning more than 8,000 rupees per month representing a population of 150 million people already exceeds the sustainable levels. These income groups have to check their CO2 emissions. They will not only contribute to global warming, but they will also deny hundreds of millions of poor Indians access to development. There are experts who feel that differentiated, decentralized, distributed model of producing renewable energy is the answer for India. Germany, the leader in renewable energy, has made most of its solar PV installation on rooftops. About 1.5 million households have installed more than 30,000 megawatts of solar panels. They're feeding it to the local grids or consuming it. Can this India do this on a much larger scale, much more decentralized, much grander scale? The third priority is how we urbanize and develop our cities. Cities over the world are the biggest emitters of CO2. Management of water, energy, transport, water, waste and sanitation, dealing with pollution have all got to go hand in hand. <clears throat> Significant urbanization has already taken place in India, but it is expected to grow in the next 15 years when 600 million people are expected to be living in the cities. The UN Sustainable Development Goal 11 aims to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable by 2030. A clear blueprint is needed for India for achieving this goal as part of the Green New Deal. These are just three areas where technology, especially geospatial technology and data can help enormously in managing land and water, managing supply and demand for energy more equitably, building sustainable, inclusive, safe and resilient cities. Geosmart technology should empower the most vulnerable populations to make ecologically smart decisions about their lives, livelihoods and localities. Thank you.